Right, hi. This is to sort of try and help with the, the, the issues about trees that we seem to have had at the moment. I've just mixed up a few colours. What I've got is I've got some burnt sienna, which is, I think all of you should have that in your kit. Um, it's a, a very ready, warm brown. To that, I've added, I've mixed up, so I've got some burnt sienna on its own, and then I've got some burnt sienna to which I've added some sap green. And you can see the difference in the tone between those two. And these are good tree colours. And then I've mixed some ultramarine blue, again with the burnt sienna. Again, you can see the difference in colours. Now I've mixed that on what we'd call the, the brown scale. So it has slightly more of the brown to it than the blue. So it has more of a brown tint, but it creates a nice natural grey. So if I put this over that one, you can see the colour that we come out with and over that one, the colour that we come out with. Now these are all very relevant for when we do trees that are going to be in the middle or the foreground especially. But just as importantly is the texture or the thickness of your paint. And really when you come in to do trees of this sort closer up, you actually want the paint to be quite thick. So if I start with down here now the other thing is trees you can do them if it's a big big tree chances are parts of it will be done wet on wet you can do them wet on dry you can add dry brushwork you can add some really beautiful barking effects just using a dry brush i'm just putting some water on first and foremost now one of the problems we've got is trees have to be proportionate i'm going to use this greeny brown colour that I've mixed up and I'm just putting that on and letting it bleed through. The bottom of the tree has to be bigger than the top. It, it just doesn't work the other way around and you might have a half decent tree but if the base is too thin it will still look wrong. So I'm just letting that in. I'm letting that colour soak in a little bit because it was very wet. You can see it's pixelating. It's spreading itself out through the water. Might take a, a, another little bit down there for its trunk. So it's just spread itself all across there. I'm going to add some of that blue grey mix that I've got and I'm just going to put it down this other side of the tree. I haven't been near the water part. I haven't cleaned my brush. I haven't re-wet my brush. Those are the things that are causing um, a lot of people problems is this habit of instantly washing your brush and dipping it in the water all the time. You don't need to. I'm just going to encourage a little bit more of a bleed here and it's still wet. You can see what's happening. You can see that the paint is running. It's collecting in places. It's spreading. And this is this is quite a big brush, actually. It's um, I think it's numbers worn off almost. I think it's uh, number five or something. Oh, a number 10. So it's quite it's quite a decent sized brush, but even from this, I can get fairly small branches. So I'm just going to take a branch up off the bough of the tree, not hanging about there. It's it's not little scarecrow arms, it's coming up off the tree. And if I lift this brush right onto its point, you can see that despite the size of it, it will give me some fairly small branches. And that's the thing you need to remember is as you move the brush away from the, the body of the tree, you need to lift it so that you, you're capable of getting these much smaller and much finer branches coming off it. You can change down to a smaller brush. 
So never feel that you're stuck with the one brush that you started with. So when you get to this point, you may decide that, okay, I need a smaller brush. Well, then move to a smaller brush. Don't struggle with a big brush that you feel like you can't control. But you want to use the bigger brush lower down so that you're not leaving behind too many brush marks. Now, a smaller brush won't hold so much paint. So again, you'll be picking up more and more paint time and time again. Don't go dipping in the water pot every time you go to pick up paint. You don't need to clean the brush off. You would only need to clean this off, possibly, if you were about to go and pick up a really bright, light, different colour. So I'm coming back here. I'm going to take another bow off this tree. Again, I've come back onto the trunk to take it off. And do you remember what I said when we were having a look at trees this week? Ask yourself why, the why question. You can get a perfectly good tree for the purposes of your painting if you concentrate on the why. And by that, all I mean is a long leg and a small leg. That will give you a trunk for a tree. If I subdivide this again, why? Yet again, I've got another perfectly good branch for a tree. Why and why and why? Don't make your branches too long. And if you're doing naked trees, I would say what you want is just a few. Now we're coming up for Halloween, so this is this is turning into a brilliant Halloween tree. But if I come back in and I use the flat of my brush, what I end up with are fingers. And fingers don't work well on trees. Can you see what's happening? All these branches, because I'm using the brush, flat, all these branches now look almost like fingers. Great for some seaweeds, not great for trees. And that tells me that people aren't lifting the branches by using the tip of the brush. So we've got that for your trunk and then for the branch and the branch and the branch and a branch. So we don't want to do that. We want to concentrate on actually getting a tree to look like a tree. So stick with the absolute basic, which is the Y shape. And then subdivide. Every time you want to take a branch off from somewhere else, Go back onto the trunk, pick it up and take it off. Keep your brush moving up towards the point all the time. And you'll end up with a half decent tree. So this is where your scrap paper will come in handy because you can have a great practice. So I'm going to just wet what will be the bow of my tree. Make sure it's wider at the bottom. That's wet. I'm going to drop some of this um, browny greeny colour in. I'm going to just drop that in on this uh, on the right hand side. When I say drop it in, I do mean drop it in. You're just touching it in. I'm not painting the whole tree. I'm allowing the paint to do the job for me. So I'm touching it in and letting it bleed down. And straight away, when I look at this, there's already little shapes forming. The paint's doing its own thing. So I'm going to straight away lift off a few little branches to come off here. Even though I'm in the light colour, I'm actually waiting for this to dry off a little bit. 
I can separate that again. So when you break each one of these down into its basic shape, its basic shape is a Y. So let's go down this side now. I'm adding in some of the dark mix. This is the, the brown with the ultramarine in. I'm just going to bring it up again. I'm not separating the colours. I'm letting them run together. That will instantly help to create a more rounded cylindrical look to the tree. It'll give it a more natural feel. I'm going to bring that into there and I'm going to run some just up the inside edge on this. Now where you add the dark into the tree, it will have the effect of pulling those branches slightly more into the foreground or slightly more forward. So wherever you add in the dark, it will have that effect. But you can see down here, these colours have mixed in quite nicely. Let's go back to my branch. We've got this one here. Move your brush so that it's lifting up, picking up on its toes. But still, at its basic, I'm still painting wise. So everywhere that I over paint with the dark, and you don't need to over paint everything, it's nice to have some of these mixed colours showing through. But everywhere that I do over paint with it, you can see it creates a completely different look to the tree. So let's put something underneath this one maybe. Let's add a little bit more dark in here. So we've got more of a shadow side coming through, some more branches cutting through. I could take, I've got a little knobbly bit here, so I'm going to drop a little bit more paint back into that. Use that knobbly bit. Let's, let's just see if this tree's recently been coppiced, it's had a bit of a haircut. I've got a nice mark here. I'm just going to drop some paint back into it just to highlight it, if you like. So it, again, it just adds to the texture and the look of the tree. I've got a couple of little bits sticking out here. This is just things that the, the paint has created itself. All I'm doing is looking and deciding what I can and can't use. So I'm not going to make that any bigger. You don't want to make your branches too extensive. This is um, a naked winter tree. I'm not going to paint the 20 million little branches on there. So all I'm going to do, same brush, I've loaded it on the side. So that means I've, I've run the side of the brush through the paint. I'm just going to touch off. So I'm taking off any excess water. And I'm going to start out here and just lightly pull this in towards the branch and each each branch if you like you're treating as a, a slightly separate entity so each branch has its own little twiglets and its own bit of foliage on it every time you reload the brush be careful you probably need to bleed it off on tissue every time to stop you ending up with really hard brush marks even this little twiglet down here, even he's got other little twiglets attached to him. When you're working on this yourself, don't be afraid to turn your board round. If it makes it easier for you to get at the picture, if you find it difficult to move your arm round or get control of the brush in a different direction, turn your board round. Don't be afraid to do that. Keep it smaller. Keep your twiglets nice and thin. And this technique will work whether your tree is winter or summer. Here we go. Here's our ground. I'm going to put something under its, uh, under its feet so it doesn't fall over in the winter. 
sided brush still. Just pull up a few little bits coming up the side of the brush. Go back to the tip if you want. You can pull up a few little grasses here and there. Don't get too carried away with the grasses. They are very, very addictive, but just a few. As that's drying, you can go back in again, add in some more. I'm just touching along the bottom here. Again, you can pull up a few more bits if you want. Move down. It now looks like maybe there's a, a little bit of snow there. So I just pull up a few little bits here and there. And all we're doing is just using the same the same techniques, but applying them differently. So if your brush is too big, move to a smaller brush. I don't advocate teeny tiny brushes. You can use a rigger brush, but you still need to get to grips with the brushes that you've got. Make your paint slightly thicker. You don't want it as a pure wash for something like this. And um, if you're working wet in wet, let it start to dry a little bit before you go adding other things in. And if you're working wet on dry, the first paint you put on needs to be damp enough for the second layer of paint to fill in. And there we go, we've created something out of pretty no much nothing. But remember the tree, he's just a Y. Don't get hung up on what type of tree it is or anything else. That will all come later. To start with, just get something that looks like a tree. That's it. Okay, happy practicing everybody.